St. John's is one of eight communities across Canada chosen to participate in an, in an initiative to raise awareness of HIV and AIDS. And if you were driving around St. John's today, you couldn't miss the message. High on a hill next to Confederation Building in St. John's, a message made up of 8,000 individual flags, each one representing the number of people who die worldwide every day from the disease. Many are signed by someone in this province, most with personal messages. There are a few blank flags here too, and members of the public are invited to add their own messages. There are seven other similar installations just like this one across the country. The AIDS Committee of Newfoundland and Labrador, along with Oxfam Canada, organized this one, and it'll stay here for two weeks. It's all part of a lead-up to next week's 16th International AIDS Conference, which this year will be held in Toronto. 8,000 red and white ribbons, with each white one containing a message, have been placed on a hill in Pippi Park, one for each person who will die today from AIDS or HIV. I mean, the numbers are absolutely staggering. There are 8,000 people, and actually it's probably closer to 8,500 people a day die of AIDS around the world. Work on coordinating the installation of memorial flags began yesterday. The hill had to be divided into grids. Volunteers spent much of the morning running lines dividing the hillside into quadrants, and then each ribbon had to be stapled to the lines, a process that took hours. Organizers say they want people to see the ribbons as a visual reminder of the toll AIDS takes on lives globally, and they say Canada needs to do more to support people living with this disease. It's get people thinking about HIV and AIDS. It's a topic that's really fallen off the radar somewhat around here in, in our province. And I think when people think of AIDS, they think of it as someone else's problem. It's, you know, it's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to my family. Um, and this is just a, a visual reminder to people that HIV and AIDS is a huge issue around the world and in our province. And I think the first step is to get people talking about HIV and AIDS. I think people are not talking about it enough. And when we're not talking about it, we might not have the, all the right information. Many of the white ribbons have been inscribed with a message like this one. People have taken a flag and written a message uh, about HIV and AIDS. They've used it uh, to write a memorial for someone who they may, who they know who might have died of AIDS or someone living with HIV AIDS. So each white flag has been signed by someone in this city or province as their message to, to HIV AIDS. Worldwide, 40 million people have been infected and there is still no cure. In Canada, we're lucky. In 1996, a cocktail of drugs were introduced that help people living with the disease. Still, there are 67,000 people in Canada living with it. This project is here for us to actually instill hope and to instill awareness in people that we're pretty lucky here and that we have, uh, we've, we've got a lot to um, appreciate and that there are people around the world that aren't as lucky. So a lot of the children that have come to fill out the flags and, and writing on them, um, it's interesting to see what the response is. A, they want to know what it's about and B, they, they feel like they're maybe helping another child somewhere else that, you know, that doesn't have parents or that isn't as lucky or as well off as we are over here. The International AIDS Conference is being held in Toronto on August 13th, and even though it's taking place across the country, it's hoped a nationwide campaign will help educate the public about becoming active in the fight against the disease. For this week, seven other cities across Canada are also doing a demonstration just like this one here, with all the flags, and we've also sent a thousand flags from each community that have been drawn on and designed by community members to the Toronto um, AIDS, International AIDS Conference. A lot of people don't know what's happening, so, so allowing our whole nation or at least cities across the, the country to become involved, then we can, we can develop that awareness and it only takes one little spark of energy or, for example, my involvement was completely random and, and I decided, hey, I, I want to do something. So, you know, getting involved, making a difference, talking to people, you never know where that takes you to. A little bit of energy goes a long Today way. Today we are raising 8,000 flags to represent the number of people that die around the world from AIDS every single day. And what's your role here? I am the community coordinator for this project. <laughs> uh, why was it important for you to get involved with this? AIDS is a, an issue that has definitely plagued Africa. 75% of the people that die from AIDS live in Africa. It is also something that, that we don't realize is being uh, prevalent among Canadians. We have many, many Canadians in this country that have a diagnosis of, of HIV. The prisons have a 
an infection rate of over 10%, which creates an epidemic. Currently, we have a pandemic around the world of the issue of AIDS, and 58% of people that are infected with HIV are Aboriginal in this country. I would ask that the community of Regina step forward. This is a battle that we're, it's right now so huge. We need everyone to be involved, to try to learn about it, to, to not have that fear that, you know, people can be loved, they can be touched, they can be held. That you don't have to be afraid of people with HIV. When, when, when Michelle talks about people who are affected by this disease, you know exactly what she's talking about. How, you're living with the disease. How does it affect you personally? Personally, it affects me. Discrimination and stigma is a major thing in my life. Uh, and I have two children at home, so they feel it as well. Um, people aren't aware, they're not educated. Uh, some people are, but most people are not. 25 years after the fact, you think that people would be more educated on the issues, and they're not. And uh, it pulls over not just on me, but on my children as well, and that's pretty devastating when I see them hurt. Uh, so that's, that's a big factor as far as right now, the challenges of that in a rural, and not rural, actually it's an urban community, but everybody kind of knows everybody in Newfoundland, and uh, it doesn't take long to figure out who has this illness. And it's not something I should hide. It's something that's part of my life. I live with it. I deal with it every day. I take a lot of medications. It's not nice. Um, and, you know, and I go out there and I educate. I, I go along with the committee sometimes, and I go to schools and stuff like that to educate. And just to hopefully reach out to some people that might want to help or may have a better understanding you know I'm, and and that's and that's what I'm hoping so my future would be good for the kids the kids will have a better future ahead of them instead of something that looks so bleak so all these flags behind me are supposed to represent one person every day that dies from AIDS and it's like when I talk to my friends about it they often say well why do you even care about it because it's not something you can really make a difference with but I don't think that's true. Um, I've been reading up about, uh, how you can uh, increase the life expectancy of an AIDS-affected person by 10 years with the right drugs that um, aren't getting to those people a lot because of the politics and greed of the uh, companies. And I think in the situation we're in here in this beautiful place with all these opportunities that can at least come out here and just raise awareness to other people that we can make a difference. Uh, because it's a commemoration or it reminds us each and every time we do this of the number of people that die every day of AIDS. And uh, our trip, Peggy's and my trip to Africa was a, a, a wonderful experience for us to put a face on the difficulties in Africa. Um, it didn't cheer us up a lot but we did feel awfully good at being able to help and coming back here and doing this and knowing that this display will be in eight communities across Canada is, is absolutely wonderful. The people in Canada will really know what's going on. The flag project culminated in a display in Toronto made up of 1,000 flags from each of the eight communities involved. Community representatives from all over Canada collaborated in setting up the flags right outside the 2006 International AIDS Conference. The 25,000 people who attended the conference in Toronto couldn't miss this collaboration of Canadians' concern.